What's up guys, Andre here, and today I'd like to take a look at building a theme switcher with dark mode using Tailwind CSS and Gridsum. So a few videos ago, I rebuilt my website using Tailwind and Gridsum, and I also made an open source version of it, which you can see here. So let's go ahead and make a theme switcher. So the idea is to have an icon here and switch to dark mode and switch back to light mode. So I also have a design for this in Sketch. It's for my website, so it's a bit different because I changed it up for this open source version. So there's the light theme and here is the dark theme. And there's the button that lets you switch. So let's go ahead and do this. So I followed the process that Jeffrey Way showed on Laircasts and it works great. I'll leave a link below if you want to see that video. Okay, so jumping into our code, if you use Tailwind, you know it has literal names for colors like BG white or BG green or anything that's defined in your config. Now, I personally think this is great, but if you know you have to build a theme switcher, then this doesn't really work very well. This is because you'll end up in situations where you have a class, say for the background, called BG white, but now you have to change that to a dark background and that doesn't work anymore because the name doesn't make any sense. So we kind of have to go back to the traditional ways of naming your things semantically. So if you look at the website, uh, if you look at, we'll start with the background here, but if you look at the background, there's three shades of a light background. We have white, then down here we have a lighter gray and then a slightly darker gray. So let's start with that and just see if we can get a dark background here. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do within this colors key in my tailwind config. I'm going to make a new section here called background, which will have all my background colors. And you can name this however you like. You can just leave it in the top level if you want, but this is the way I did it. And this is a bit redundant because Tailwind will take these colors and add like a BG white, for example. And what I'm doing is gonna, it's going to be like BG background, primary, and so on and so forth. And the BG and the background are kind of redundant, but that's the way I have it. And it worked out pretty well. Anyways, we're going to make use of CSS variables and we're going to switch those variables out whenever we use the theme switcher. So let's just define some colors here first. I'm going to paste them in and I have them named primary, secondary, and ternary. And these are just the ones for white and the current ones we have. And let me just replace these three shades of white with these classes. So nothing's gonna change. I'm just setting up the class names for now. So this one, the white is in default and BG white. Just to prove to you it's that, let's just change it to one of Tailwind's classes. There we go. So, uh, so BG background primary is what I named it. So that should be white. Okay. And then the next one, the next shade of white is in this contact me section. So that should be in here. Did I save this? Let me save this. Does it still work? Okay, so it's still white, so we know that's working. Cool. Uh, the next section is this contact me. So let's go back to, it. I think it's an index. Let's look for contact me. And there we go, it's BG gray 100. And we're gonna switch this out with BG background secondary. And see if that works, it should be the same. And it is cool, but now it's using that new class name. And then the third section is where join my newsletter is. Join my newsletter and that's BG gray 300. Now it's BG background ternary. Okay, and that still works, cool. But now I have a set of colors that are dark mode, which I'm gonna swap out here just so you can see it in dark mode, at least the initial stages of dark mode. So I'm gonna comment these out and then I will paste these new ones in, the same names, but uh, the dark mode versions. So this should now have dark backgrounds. 
and there you go cool so that is a start okay so now I'd like to swap these values out with CSS variables so I will comment these out and I will swap them out with CSS variables and here are the variable names I'm gonna keep it the same as the class name here and now I'm gonna save that and in our main CSS this is where we define the variables so I'm just gonna put it up here before all of my custom CSS and let's put it on the root namespace and it's just let me just paste that in and define them so it'll be like this and this one is white and then let me just do this this one is a gray and then this one is slightly darker okay so now our variables are defined and this should work and go back to light mode if I did this correctly okay so it's back to light mode and let me just show it to you in dark mode again but now using CSS variables uh, let me just comment this out uh, let me just put, leave it in there these are the dark versions which I just showed you and there you go cool okay but now how do we switch back between light and dark modes so here's what we can do we can so let me just put this back to the light mode we can set up namespaces for each set of variables so theme light and theme dark and I can paste in the values for theme dark and we can dynamically switch the class name based on whatever theme we want so now back to our default I'm gonna put theme light here by default now this should be theme light okay but if I change that just change it in DevTools obviously we'll be using view but let me just show it to you working where's this right here theme dark there you go it's dark mode okay now let me just do the text here I'm not gonna do every element here but let me just show you the text and then you'll have an understanding of how this works so let's leave it on dark by default for now so we can see the text so here is where of where most of my text is defined uh, the color of the text I mean so let's just see if this is actually where it's defined so we're gonna change it to green okay so that is where it's defined so we can change this with our new definition so I'm going to change this to text copy primary and now I'm going to go back to my tailwind config and do the same thing I did here but now with a new key called copy and let me just paste in some values here okay I'm going to paste in primary and secondary I'm not sure if I'm using secondary but I have it in there and let me paste in some of the values, not some of the values, the actual values in my CSS. So here it is for my theme light. And let me paste it in for my theme dark. Okay, and these colors I just took directly from the Tailwind config from one of these grays. You can actually reference uh, the variables as well but I just hard-coded it here and now I have an error I need to put a comma here and I might have to restart grid sum here okay so now the text is 
working. Um, you can do the same process for this. I'm not going to show you that. And there's obviously other things I have to work on, but this is a good start. And I also have another version of this logo for dark mode. Uh, let's just hard code that in for now, and then we'll make it dynamic later on. So it's in default. Logo dark mode, I think. Okay, cool. Okay, now let's work on a menu item here that can toggle between the different themes. So let's start with that. Um, so here are the menu items. And I'm going to copy this one. I'm going to duplicate this one. And I don't need this. Don't need any of this. And let me just set the href. And I'm going to change this with an image later on, but I'll just put a T there for theme. And let's put an event listener on this. So it's going to be click dot prevent equals toggle theme. Now let's add some state. Um, so this is for the responsive menu, but we want one for the theme. So let's do default is theme light. So this is going to be the class name. So either theme light or theme dark. And I already have a toggle here for the menu, but we want that toggle theme method. And all this is going to do is set the theme. So this dot theme is, and I'll use a ternary here. If this dot theme is theme light, and switch it to theme dark. And if not, just leave it, I mean, switch it to theme light. And now, instead of hard coding theme light up here, or theme dark, we can get rid of this. And we can just bind the class to theme. And that should work, hopefully. Okay, so theme light is default. Let me just refresh. If I click it, awesome. And that toggles on and off. Cool. Okay, let's fix the image here because uh, that has to switch based on the theme as well. So I'm going to put a V else on this because I want this to be the else case. And we'll make one for the if case. So V if theme is theme light, then we just have the normal logo. And then the V else case is there. Cool. See if this works. So sorry, this has to be in quotes. See if this works. Okay. And now that should switch. It does. Cool. And now I want to switch this to uh, an SVG icon. And there's two icons based on if it's dark or light. So let me just get one in there for now. So instead of this T, where's this? Right here. So I'm going to paste in an SVG. This is the conditional, which we'll re-add in a second. Let's just see if it shows up. OK, so that's the moon. And it should still work. It does. But I want it to be a sun when we're in dark mode. So I'm going to put that V if back. And I'm just going to paste in the else case, which is the other icon. So paste it in here. Cool. And now that icon should switch based on what the theme is. Awesome. Again, I'll switch this behind the scenes, but 
we have our icon working. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add a subtle transition on the background so it's not so janky when you click it. So let me take a look here. Okay, so it's fairly straightforward. All we have to do is add a class here. Let's call it Content Wrapper. And we just have to add a transition on this in our CSS. So we can put it, we'll put it under here. Uh, content wrapper, and then we add a transition. So transition, we're transitioning the background color, and I'm gonna do 0.25 seconds, or you can change it to your liking, but I like a quarter of a second. And now there is a subtle transition when we click on it. Awesome. Okay, now I'd like to persist the theme. If I go to dark mode and refresh, it goes back to the default. And I want that to stay in dark mode, if that's what the user has set. So we can make use of local storage here, and it's pretty straightforward. Back to our default. So when we are setting the theme here, we just have to add one more line here, which sets the theme in our local storage dot set item say theme and we can just give it this dot theme so let's see if this works let's open up dev tools and right now there should be nothing in there let me just refresh this uh, application local storage Okay, so it's in there, I think, from before, but let me just remove it. Okay, so refresh. Nothing cool, but if we, if you, if we set, set the theme, there it is right there. Theme dark, theme light, theme dark. Okay, so now all we have to do is set the theme when the component is created so we'll use a created hook and set the theme here so this dot theme equals local storage dot get item theme or we'll default it to theme light if it doesn't exist and that should do it save that refresh this and there you go. It remembers which theme we have on. If it's light, defaults to light. But for dark, it defaults to dark after we, we refresh it. Awesome. So there you have it, guys. We've managed to build a theme switcher and a dark mode for our gridsome theme. I still have a lot of work to do with the other elements uh, of, of dark mode, uh, also the blog but I think you have an understanding of how it can be done. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Okay, thanks. Bye.